Hey guys, welcome to our weekly Indian Web3 news show here on Backstage with Millionaires. I'm Caleb, your host, and thank you guys so much for showing up. This is our second episode in this series on the Web3 news that's happening here in India, so I really appreciate you guys tuning in. And it's been a pretty interesting week in India's Web3 space. We've got the announcement of Shardium, which is a layer one blockchain network being launched by one of the co-founders of Wazir X, which is gonna take on networks like Ethereum and Bitcoin, which are relatively slow and also so quite expensive to use. We've also got more Indian wedding Web3 news to talk about, including the first ever marriage happening on the blockchain, including NFT vows and a digital priest. And we also have an update on the union budget 2022 and what it means for cryptocurrencies here in India. The situation is a little bit less optimistic than we had initially hoped, but we're gonna be talking about all of those things and more coming up right after this. All right, so first up in the Web3 news, let's talk about Shardium, which is a layer one blockchain network being launched by one of the co-founders of Wazir X, Nishal Shetty. So Nishal is gonna be launching Shardium along with US-based blockchain architect Omar Syed. Now, the whole point of Shardium, the problems that it's trying to solve are speed and cost. And these are problems that are facing blockchain networks like Bitcoin and Ethereum, and they're pretty big problems. So first of all, let's talk about speed. Bitcoin processes less than eight transactions per second. And in the last year, it's usually somewhere between three and five. Ethereum, on the other hand, has been able to handle somewhere in the ballpark of 10 to 20 transactions a second in the last year. But just for comparison here, Visa processes around 1,700 transactions per second. So that's what it takes to be a global player here in the payment space. Hundreds, if not thousands of transactions per second. Now, what happens when a queue starts to form, when more than a handful of people want to transact using Ethereum or Bitcoin every second? Well, this is where cost comes in because the more people that want to transact, the higher the demand, the more expensive each transaction gets. In fact, the average transaction fee for Bitcoin and Ethereum crossed 60 and $70 US in April and May of 2021, respectively. And in the case of Bitcoin, this was because there weren't enough miners globally to keep prices down as China had started cracking down on Bitcoin mining and a lot of the miners were located in China. So this lowered the supply and increased the price. So to understand how Shardium plans on building a scalable blockchain, one that isn't super expensive and is also relatively fast, it's important to understand how most blockchains work right now. So let's take Bitcoin as an example here. So in the case of Bitcoin, there's upwards of 15,000 nodes. And these nodes make up Bitcoin's peer-to-peer -peer network. And everyone in this network, all of those nodes, have to store a copy of all of the transactions that have happened on the blockchain so far. And this is what makes Bitcoin so secure because everyone in the network knows what's going on. But it also makes things slow because propagating the network with all of this information, all of these transactions takes a lot of time. And the larger the network grows and the more transactions actions it's facilitating, the bigger this problem becomes. So now that we understand what's happening over at Bitcoin, we can contrast this with what's happening over at Shardium. What is the problem that Shardium is trying to solve? Uh, if you look at the state of crypto today, there are about uh, 200 million uh, plus people who are into crypto and uh, they're you know accessing the blockchain in various ways through various protocols and various decentralized applications. Um, uh, maybe three to four years ago, this 200 million would have been like a dream uh, for the blockchain ecosystem in general. It was seen as a niche seg sector. But today, uh, the path forward is even more clearer, which is uh, we are going to go from 200 million to a billion people in the next two to three years. And um, most of the solutions that are built today, uh, and I would say almost all of the blockchains that are built today haven't really, uh, you know, thought out on how do you scale to a billion people. And all of the scaling solutions that are being implemented, it's incremental. Uh, you know, how do you support from 200 million to let's say 220 million, 250 million. But how do you support a billion, 2 billion, 4 billion? That's 4.73 billion plus people on the internet. How do you support all of them? Now, that is the problem that we are here to solve with Shardium because uh, the solution is known, which is you shard a database or a blockchain to support so that there is infinite scaling. But that solution has not been implemented. And uh, we are one of those first to have implemented sharding on a blockchain. And the idea is to um, you know, take this to market and be ready uh, 
for all the developers and for the ecosystem to grow from 200 million to over a billion, uh, while not being worried about higher gas fees, lower decentralization, or lower security. So that's that's what we are trying to achieve with Shardium out here. Uh, and because it is sharded, theoretically, uh, every time a new node joins, the TPS increases, and there's no uh, upper limit as such. But achieving like uh, uh, TPS is our first goal, and then go to a million. I think million TPS is our uh, sort of, you know, for now, if I don't want to think too much beyond, that's the ultimate goal. Can we reach a million TPS? Technically, it would mean uh, millions of nodes uh, in the network. Uh, but yeah, I think for now, I would call that the moonshot if I had to put a number. But the moment you achieve that, the moment you achieve a million TPS, and let's say the network needs uh, two million. You just have to add more nodes, and the network then scales to two million TPS. That's what I mean when we also say infinite scaling, which is you know you the way Facebook scales is uh, they add more servers. I think that's how blockchains should scale: add more nodes, and that's what uh, Shardium is all about. Just add more nodes. Their AlphaNet, or in other words, their first pilot version, is going to launch in April of 2022, followed by the beta net, and then finally the main net, the final version. And that's expected to be launched in the fourth quarter of 2022. All right, next up in the Web3 news, I have a quick update for you guys on that now famous Tamil Nadu based couple that are having the first ever Indian wedding reception in the metaverse. So just a couple of days before they were planning on having their wedding and then eventually the wedding reception in the metaverse, they decided to drop 12 NFTs, including the invitation to the wedding and the bride and groom's virtual avatars on an NFT marketplace called beyondlife.club. So the wedding reception invites in particular, which were being sold for $10 each, were sold out in seconds. And one of these invites was resold later on for $4,450. So I'm curious to know what you guys think of this trend. And is it something that you would consider doing for your own wedding, minting some NFTs and making a bit of money for your honeymoon? Also, one other thing that I wanted to put in front of you guys was that we're getting a lot of this Web3 news from Twitter. That's just where a lot of these things are happening. It's where they're being announced. And so if there's something that you guys want us to cover on this Web3 news show, or even on the startup news show for that matter, then just share it with us. Tweet it at us at BW Millionaires. That's our Twitter handle, BW Millionaires. And maybe we'll include it in the next news video. All right, now speaking of Web3 weddings, a couple from Pune has made their wedding official on the blockchain. So this couple got married on the 15th of November of 2021, but had to opt for a court marriage because of COVID-19 restrictions, and they felt like this wasn't enough. So they decided to get a digital priest and made their marriage blockchain official by executing an Ethereum contract, which consecrated their commitment in the form of an NFT. All right, next up in the Web3 news, and this isn't really a news item, it's more of a correction or an apology on my part. Last week, we announced that cryptocurrencies had been legalized here in India, but that just wasn't true. It was a mistake on our part. And we were kind of just parroting some Twitter accounts that we had seen, Bloomberg, Binance. Um, we thought these people were saying it was legal, and so we just copied what they said. That was, of course, our mistake, and we should have done proper research, and we didn't do that. And what we failed to understand was that when you tax something, if a government taxes something, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's legal. That was the big mistake that we made, and that's something that I said specifically, that governments don't tax things that are illegal, but in fact they do. And we found that out because of all of you guys leaving that information for us in the comments. So thank you so much for letting us know, for correcting us, and holding us accountable because we don't want to be spreading misinformation here at Backstage with Millionaires. So the official correction here is that cryptocurrencies are still in a gray zone. They're not legal, they're not illegal, they're just somewhere in between, they're in limbo. And they'll probably stay that way until the government of India releases the crypto bill, hopefully at some point this year. All right, next up in the Web3 news, but going back again to the union budget 2022, last week, of course, we had talked about that 30% tax. But one thing that we didn't talk about was the 1% tax deducted at source. Basically, anytime you buy or sell a virtual asset here in India, you have to pay a 1% tax. And that didn't really seem like a big deal to us at the time. It's just 1%, right? But then we saw this tweet from one of the co-founders of Zerodha, Nitin Kamat. So let's just imagine here that you're trading cryptocurrencies on a crypto trading platform. So you put 100 rupees into this crypto trading platform at the beginning of the day, and you do 50 trades throughout the day, which means that you've bought and then sold crypto worth 100 rupees during each trade. 
Now, if 1% of this value is kept by the trading platform as a TDS, as a tax deducted at the source, for every single trade, then that means that after 50 trades, the platform would end up keeping 50 rupees, which is half of your account's value. It could kill off a lot of the Indian crypto trading platforms and also make crypto trading really unattractive for people here in India. All right, moving on to some funding news now, and this is a big one, guys. Polygon has raised $450 million in a funding round led by Sequoia Capital. And that means that this is the biggest funding round ever raised by an Indian crypto startup. And not just an Indian crypto startup, but an Indian Web3 startup in general. At the time of me filming this video, Polygon's token, Matic, has a market cap of $15 billion. Now, besides Sequoia Capital, some of the other investors that participated in this round that you might have heard of are Tiger Global, SoftBank, Unacademy, Elevation Capital, which was previously Scythe Partners, Animoca Brands, and Kevin O'Leary. But the interesting thing here is that unlike a lot of startups, this wasn't actually Polygon selling equity in their company to raise these funds. Instead, they sold Matic tokens to these investors in a private sale. So Polygon currently has 2.67 million monthly active users who generate roughly 3 million transactions every single day, which is more than double the volume of Ethereum. And Polygon is planning on using these funds to help make mass adoption of Web3 a reality. They believe that their investment into zero-knowledge technology, which allows them to verify transactions without compromising on privacy, is going to be the key to getting the next billion users to adopt Web3. All right, next up in the Web3 funding news, celebrity NFT platform Collection has raised $5 million from investors like Polygon, HyperEdge Capital, Titan Ventures, Maven Capital, and more. So Collection is an NFT marketplace where fans can buy and trade over 1,200 NFTs from their favorite cricketers and celebrities from over 10 countries, including the likes of Yuvraj Singh, Brendan McMullen, Glenn Maxwell, Kieran Poehler, Dwayne Bravo, and Salim Suleiman. Collection is going to be using these funds to launch their own native token, CLXN, and to build their own metaverse infrastructure too. All right, next up in the Web3 funding news, decentralized finance investment platform Pillow has raised $3 million in a funding round led by Elevation Capital. So Pillow offers crypto investment opportunities to its users by allowing them to earn up to 18% returns on stable coins and other cryptocurrencies, with no lock-in period or any transaction fees. They launched the beta version of their app for users in December of 2021, and they already have $1 million worth in assets under management. So with these funds, Pillow is going to be adding high return generating DeFi strategies for more crypto assets on their platform, and they're also going to be using these funds to expand globally too. All right, next up in the Web3 funding news, blockchain-based fantasy gaming platform 1 to 11 has raised $2.5 million from investors like Oracle's Investment Group, Maximus Capital, NFT Technologies, Magnus Capital, and Dutch Crypto Investors. So 1 to 11's portfolio includes play-to-earn fantasy sports games across categories like football, cricket, baseball, and basketball, catering to over 2 million users. In the next couple of months, they're planning to introduce a governance token called 1 to 11, and also to launch an NFT marketplace too. They're going to be using these funds to enter new markets like the Middle East, Europe, and North America, and also to add market-specific games too, like American football for North American users. All right, that is all the Indian Web3 news that I have for you guys this week. I really hope that you guys enjoyed the second episode of this ongoing series here. Big thanks to all of our Backstage with Millionaires members now, our Unicorns, our Decacorns, and our Hectacorns. You guys are all amazing. Thank you so much for your financial support. But even if you can't afford to financially support what we do here, just the fact that you've made it through to the end of the video is plenty of help. So thank you guys so much for watching this episode of Backstage with Millionaires, and I will see you in the next one. 